Federal government for now don't remove the suspension with summer to humanitarian organizations. Supreme Court don't strike out PDP articles appeal, then say you no know, get merit. Federal Executive Council, FEC, don't approve 5.72 billion naira for NDIC offices. And police don't confirm the release of Catholic Reverend Father by kidnappers. My country people, good afternoon this afternoon. Thank you, sir, you join us for As It Take Happen. My name, Nana Douglas. The federal government for now don't leave the suspension within summer for two humanitarian organizations head where they operate for northeastern part of Nigeria. The organization, na action against hunger and messy call. The lifting of the suspension come after Obonge government received one report from one board of inquiry where they touchlight their activities. On top one statement by Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Farouk, the concerns and recommendations of the Board of Inquiry, BOI, will continue to receive attention and scrutiny to address issues within race. The statement adds, say, then go address major issues based on the seven-point agenda will be seen at the UN Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator proposed to strengthen coordination and collabo between humanitarian community and the government of Nigeria inside the Northeast. When I remember, say, then be suspend two international humanitarian organizations, say, make them no operate inside the Northeast, sake of one allegation by the Nigerian army, say, then they provide help to Boko Haram people. And for other news where they trend now, Supreme Court don't strike out the appeal where Al Haji Atiku Abubakar and in party will be the People's Democratic Party, PDP 5. We've been challenging the judgment of the presidential appeal panel will uphold the election victory of President Muhammad Buhari. The seven member justices of the Supreme Court will be say now the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanku Muhammad Lead. Now so all of them can agree for the judgment to strike out the appeal, say he no get merit. Supreme Court talks say they no give reason why they judge the matter like that. For one, they say they go give reason why they judge the matter like that for one date when they go send to all the parties for the matter. When they react on top of the judgment, lawyer to PDP and Atiku, Mike Ozekome, San, talks that the court used strategy to avoid unnecessary tension across the country. That strategy is to prevent, prevent unnecessary tension, gripping the country once more, like during elections. At least today, the baby has been delivered, not aborted. Something drastic has to be done about our electoral laws and the electoral jurisprudence. For Buhari and APC lawyers, then talks that the judgment of the Supreme Court don't prove, say, true, true, President Buhari win the election. The chapter, paragraphs and lines, having to do with 2019 election, especially the presidential aspect, has been laid to rest until 2023. It has been a night of long knives, but we thank God that it has ended peacefully. We should thank God to have the type of judges we have at the Supreme Court. And this server something, server something that has, has been laid to rest. The issue is this server, I ne never said there are no server. <laughs> they said I never had a particular server. www.factsdontlie.nigeria.com. Uh, uh, we say I never does not have that type of server. When I go remember, say Atiku and in party with PDP, been approached Supreme Court to challenge the decision of the presidential election petition tribunal declaration on top February 23 presidential election. The team be say both APC and PDP don't react on top of the judgment of the Supreme Court sake of the February 23 presidential election. For their different reaction, the national chairman of APC and PDP's vice presidential candidate, Peter Obi, talk their mind. For his own side, APC's Adams Oshomole see the judgment as victory, not only for President Muhammadu Buhari or for APC, but for all Nigerians. He can maintain say the president go now concentrate for governance and how it will take move the country forward. The issue of the election is now behind us, and uh, I believe the government 
the people of Nigeria will work in unison to take the Nigeria uh, project to the next level. So I am excited, I am happy, and I think this is not about Buhari, it's not about APC, it's about Nigeria. And I believe in this business, Nigerians are all winners. Yes. Elections have been conducted, the courts have pronounced, the, second, the Supreme Court has now pronounced, and I believe this is it, this is the last bus stop. Our election can be determined on the basis of fat.lie.com, <laughs> hosted by unknown uh, Yahoo Yahoo boys. For my own part, Obi will express shock on top of the decision of the Supreme Court to say they need to do something about the electoral laws and acts inside the country. The election and the result was not the result of lawful vote cast, but the process has come to the end. I thank all those who were involved, the lawyers, the judges, all of you from the 40 states. This election and the judgment is not about President Buhari or His Excellency Alaji Atiku Abubakar. It is about the future of our country. For the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari talks to the judgment of the Supreme Court will dismiss the appeal will be say Atiku Abubakar and the party will be People's Democratic Party, PDP bring, don't give the country the right to move on. On top one statement will be say, now senior special advisor on top media, Garba Sheh Hussain, President Buhari will for far away Saudi Arabia for the future investment initiative conference. Talk say, they don't settle the victory since February 2019. President Buhari for the statement contact PDP and their presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, sake of say, then carry their protest go court, just as he had say, then, don't, then conduct themselves in line with the laws of the country. This statement I'd say make PDP allow President Buhari and the federal government pay attention to plenty issues where they steer the country for face. For another one we resemble them, when did they react to the Supreme Court ruling, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar say as he be so, he don't fight good fight and he no go give up for Nigeria and their democracy. The former vice president for Nigeria talks say he must accept say the judicial journey when he choose to take as Democrat when be. He say he no regret him at all. He talks say whether they do justice or not on top of the matter, make Nigerian people decide. He talks say as a Democrat, he don't fight good fight for Nigerian people. And on top of the coming governorship election for Bayelsa and Kogi states, it remains 16 days to go. An election joint body will be the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Talks say they don't fully prepare for free, fair, cajard, and smooth elections. INEC Chamo, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, now announced this one on Wednesday inside Abuja for their quarterly meeting with journalists. Professor Yakubu talks say the commission will work with critical stakeholders to stop any behavior that will likely disrupt the smooth conduct of the election. He said INEC will continue to depend on top partnership with the media so that they fit cover the election process very well. He come back the media say, I take God beg una, make una report with him una see, and nobody the other way round. Meanwhile, the INEC Chamo talk say, double voter registration no go be conditioned for disqualification of candidates for election. He been react to questions from journalists sick of the established case of double registration against one of the frontline candidates for the Kogi governorship election. You go remember say then sanction some INEX staff for the double registration will be happened for that time inside Kogi state. And for this story where they disturb people for mind now, FCT Police Command, Don Bab one Mohammed Bello Kolo, will be in the parade himself as a minister of FCT and he used the opportunity to dupe unsuspecting members of the public. When he parade the suspect before journalists for Abuja on Wednesday, FCT Commissioner of Police Bala Chiroma talks say, when he parade himself as FCT minister, he don't so far dupe in victims with money where worth 52 million naira, where he allegedly received for in, by installments under pretense, say in, he go give them contract. Chiroma talks say the suspect tell police say he get access special secret informate when he be served for the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, during a National Youth Service Court days. Our correspondent, John Emmanuel, get more gist on top of this matter. 
Mo Mayan say this Connie Connie suspect will be former youth copper for FCTA. Tell police say him get plenty expo and informate about some secret document by the time when he is served for FCTA. He can follow Yan say them arrest this suspect after somebody com they complain on the 28th of October this month about how this guy carries Kama, Dupam, and carry money run away. Police operating for the Tyson State Intelligence Bureau of the FCT Command arrested one Mohammed Ben Lokolo, 27 years, who has been parading himself as the Honorable Minister of the FCT, Malam Muhammad Musa Ben Lokolo, and defrauding unsuspecting members of the public. In the course of impersonating the Honorable Minister, the suspect has so far defrauded a victim of the sum of 52 million which he had illegally received in installments under the pretext of giving them contracts, giving him contracts. The suspect stated that he has access to classified information while he served at the Federal Capital Territory during his National Youth for service. When he can open mouth to the confess, this Kony Kony suspect, see, not be only him commit this crime, who, see, now him and his friends follow joy hand together to the defraud people. Now, so the guy can't deny, say, the money we him collect from people, no reach 52 million naira. He talks now only 9.8 million naira he don't collect for this business. The contractor came to meet me when I was serving in the FCT. So he said he wants me to help him, to help him buy the document, the tender documents, and he wants to tender for a contract in our place. So I helped him get the documents, and the very day he came for the open, uh, for the submission, he came late, which we helped him to put the documents in, and they did the opening and everything. So after then, those same my people, uh, they organized for that they will help him for his uh, due diligence and other things and which they called him for the due diligence and everything so at a point he gave some money he gave around 9.5 the SA to the Minister of FCT can't use this opportunity to advise the general public on how they will carry pursue contract for the ministry the FCT minister does not conduct uh, official matters through Facebook or other social media platforms. Every transaction of the FCT administration is being done through official channels. So if anybody contacts you that he has uh, contracts or land offers to give you, please walk yourself to the offices of the FCT minister. It is open. According to the police, things where this guy used Kony Kony collect from people include 1206 Pujoka, 1 Kekena Pep, 46 inches plasma TV, 1 generator, and other things. This now, John Emmanuel for Wazobia Max TV. I'm from FCT, make we carry enter Southeast. Good news as police command inside Enugu State don't confirm the release of Vice Rector, Queen of Apostles Spiritual Year Seminary, Reverend Father Arin Zemado of Imeziowa for Ezago local government area inside the state. The command talk talk person Ebere Amarizu confirmed the release of the priest inside Enugu on Wednesday. Then kidnapped Reverend Father Madu on Monday at about 5.30 for evening for the gate of the seminary by people where they never fit identify. The Catholic Diocese for Enugu uh, for their official Facebook page also confirmed say, true, true, the priest don't regain in freedom. My people on a city watch as it take happen on top was Zobia Max TV. We they come back with business news. And inside the world of business, the Nigerian Customs Service Area 1 Command Zone C Port Harcourt don't seize items where people smuggle with worth more than 900 million naira. When did the young with Tory people shortly after inspect the seized items for the Nigerian Port Authority inside Port Harcourt, the Controller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, talks say 32 bags of pangolin scales were worth more than 800 million naira nine then seized for the cargo wing of the Port Harcourt International Airport, where they won't carry the goods enter China. He adds say they also seized 10 containers with canned tomato paste and two containers where they load with canned mackerel fish. With an estimate to worth more than 90 million naira for 
the Port Harcourt Seaport. Six million. The declaration contravenes section 161, subsection 2, 3, and 4 of SEMA, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and the consignments are therefore ceased. Gentlemen of the press, it, it, is, it, is, it is becoming clearer for those who had some doubts about the rationale for partial closure, closure of the land borders, to indeed that we indeed have a lot to gain. Security is improving, farmers are enjoying more patronage, and are able to engage more hands, and our own well-being has also been increased because the drugs that are being imported, especially tramadol and the rest, which are harmful to the health of our, and well-being of our people, have been reduced drastically. Security, for those of you who must have been reading the newspapers and listening to the uh, electronic uh, media, the rate of banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, and of course, the activities of the Boko Haram in the Northeast has reduced drastically. And the, the, the simple conclusion is that either the arms and ammunition that is being used by these miscreants is no longer available, or the miscreants who do transcend from border to come into Nigeria and commit this act are, are no longer allowed to come in as a result of the border closure. Either of the two, ours is a gain because the life of our people is now secured, our people are safe, and then they can go about their, doing their, their businesses without hindrance. While they thank officers of Portacourt Area 1 Command for their effort to seize the items, it talks to the Customs Service don't increase their surveillance duties sake of the partial close of border inside the country. And for the next business news, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, talks to the Federal Executive Council, FEC, don't approve the construction of the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, Sunal Head Office for Bauchi State. When she debriefed newsmen after the council meeting on Wednesday, she talks that the contract will go chop more than 3 billion naira, then go complete them for 96 weeks. She also revealed that the council equally approved the award of 2.489 billion naira contract for 12 consultancy services for the development of NDIC corporate headquarters, head office annex inside Abuja, plus including their office for Ikoyi, Lagos, and one training center for Lekki, all inside Lagos State. My people now the size of as it take happen this afternoon. Thank you, say the part of the program. My name na, na Douglas. But before we go, I beg make I remind on waiting from our top Tory. Federal government for now don't remove the suspension within summer to humanitarian organizations. Supreme Court don't strike out PDP article appeal, then say it no get merit. Federal Executive Council FEC don't approve 5.72 billion naira for NDIC offices. Police don't confirm the release of Catholic Reverend Father by kidnappers. Thank you and thank you so you join us. Good afternoon. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.